I'll let Todd give the result. It is Maryland 12, Boston College 10, and if you want to count AIAW, national championship number 15 for the University of Maryland women's lacrosse program. Let's break it down. We were just talking, in my opinion, it wasn't, Megan Taylor obviously was the MVP. Of the 20, tournament. 24 saves in, in two, two games, games. Against two powerful, powerful offensive right. teams. At the Jack Lish Law Group, uh, not only will you feel like a member of their family, uh, you'll also receive uh, unprecedented customer service. We love our clients, and you'll see that if you trust us at the Jack Lish Law Group, the big dogs from the small firm, and we'll reward your trust. Call the big dogs today. Don't wait. Find us online at bigdogsmallfirm.com. And also, the saves in this game, when the game got close, were beyond compare. But I thought Maryland won this game on their defensive effort, really clogging up the middle, really, even though Apuzo and Kent got their goals, you're not going to shut them out. I thought they really made it difficult. How about what, you? What, what, I, what I thought Maryland did exceptionally well on defense, Bruce, is they forced BC into into one versus one. BC had assists on almost 50, like 46% of their goals coming into this game. And today, I'm thinking of their 10 goals. I bet they didn't have three assists. What? So, so I think that's just a big, big credit to Maryland's defense. You know, to force them, it forces them out of what they do best. Well, I thought when they came out in the second half, and they kind of ran that merry-go play, merry-go-round play around the goal, got somebody open. We didn't see it again. I was a little surprised because it really worked. Now maybe Kathy adjusted, but whoever set up the defense of this game uh, deserves the coaching credit. Typically, I'm sure it was Kathy. Now typically that's Laurie Kennis. All right, Laurie La Kennis. Laurie Kennis is the defensive guru of all defensive gurus. She was great. The team was great. Uh, Brittany Griffin. If there was a second choice, could have been her. Could have been her. She played ground. Yeah, Brittany is what year? Uh, junior. So she's got another year. Yes, sir. And Grace? Uh, Grace, a sophomore. She's got, she'll be back. So we lose a lot. Yeah. And a lot of the stars of this game are back. Yeah, we Except lose. Except Jen Giles, who came through in that second half. Really, and had a, had struggled to start. She, she forced a, a couple of shots and had some turnovers. And, and credit to BC, their defense was was pretty swarming too. And and Maryland, uh, for the most part, did a great job. I haven't seen the stats, but they did a great job clearing the ball, which BC is really aggressive on their ride. That's how Apuzo gets so many uh, cause turnovers typically, and ground balls is in the middle of the field on their ride. And and they they're, they're, they hold opponents to well under 80% on clears. And Maryland's a 90 plus percent. Maryland's the best clearing team in the nation, and they showed that today. Too. Yeah, we don't have the stats. We'll have them up on the site later. However, I will say this much: I think they overrode us. I think that we got a lot of uh, good looks and a lot of man advantage, a lot of stuff on the uh, breaking the clears. And sometimes as easy as we did, other times weren't. But another case could be made for number 24. What Julia a break. What a game she had. What an incredible game. And even though Apuzo got a few goals, uh, oh, Bragg 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 really, for the most part, kept her under control. When you have a, and that's such an advantage when you have a defensive player like that. But the whole defense, Shelby Mercer, Julia Bragg, Lizzie Colson, all, all of them, that, that whole, whole crew back there, uh, the de defensive middies, Erica Evans and Jen Giles. And, I, and, not, you brought up a name I got to ask you about. Why was Erica Evans the one chosen to be face guarded? Because the way she's been playing? Or? I think so. But I, I wow, mean, I mean, you know, went to six on six with steel. And our six players were, you know, it didn't but, make any but sense Evan, to Evan, me. I, I thought, Evan, I, you know, I think Evans has been so good, so much kind of on fire. And if you if you look at, she, she had come into the game leading Maryland in, in the number of goals scored. And, and, for most of that came in the last six or eight games of the season. She's just been a scoring machine. And, and maybe I guess that uh, that was a judgment that Acacia made 
uh, that she's the player she wanted to take out. Is of brought to you by Viner Consulting. Help desk support for your computers and networks. Managed services and 24-hour a day help desk are just a few of the affordable benefits. Get help when you need it by Terps that you know. Call us at 301-251-2900 or visit oneviner.com. All right, let's go back to how the game went. Maryland, a nice halftime lead at eight to four. Naturally, you're greedy; you wanted more, but you're playing. You're playing the, the, the arguably the second best team in the country. Yeah, absolutely. I I just wanted. I, I would have been a little more comfortable. Maryland had the last possession. They got a decent shot, and they just it didn't convert. But I really would have been felt more comfortable going in nine four. Uh, as opposed to 8-4 because again I think late in the game Maryland's legs got tired and fortunately the Terps had built up enough of a lead and they were so solid defensively but they had a couple of turnovers. BC scored two man down goals in the last uh, you know five minutes or so of the game so I, and I think that's indicative yeah. I think that I think that's indicative of a team that's getting tired and and we've ta I talked about it over and over and over again about you know, playing it until 11:30 Friday night, and now you turn around and you're playing in the heat. This heat, almost 90 degrees. Yeah, but this game refuted your theory. You were worried that Maryland was going to be in trouble because of that late game, and and I I just think they're in such great shape. They're in such so deep. They're fit. You know, the only time I got really scared was when uh, Kaylee Hartshorn, our draw player. Uh, bumped heads with Cat with uh, Lizzie Colson. With Lizzie Colson, if she was out, could have been trouble with those draws at the end. If I if I didn't get stabbed, Maryland might have got the majority of the draws. I it was certainly close. It was clo way. it was close enough. I you know and and I said that uh, in in our preview that that if Maryland could stay close on the draws, that they're they're better defensively and close to to equal offensively. That they would win the game, and and they did, and you know, I'm, just, I'm frankly I'm happy that, that that the game didn't have another five minutes. <laughs> I don't think they would have won. I don't think uh, BC would have won. It was uh, they were desperate at the end, and it took three minutes to cure 12 seconds. It was it was time wise impossible to get two goals in 12 seconds from one end of the field. Oh yeah, game. that that at that point when in, in the final turnover that uh, Brindy Griffin stepped out of bounds, I think. Um, yeah, that, at that point it didn't matter, but uh, it, you know it was all over. But the shouting, but you know a couple of key plays and late, late in the game, and and again kudos to Megan Taylor who was just remarkable in goal. Yeah, it kind of, it kind of went the way we talked about. It. You got to give me credit. Beginning of the year, I took a look at the roster. <laughs> I saw the seniors, and what did I say? Said that this is a tough team to beat. Nobody's going to stop Maryland. They didn't. Uh, they had a really easy go of it in uh, on Friday night. I hate to say that, but it's the truth. No, they did. And today, even though it was only a two two goal game, it never really was in jeopardy. Uh, Northwestern never had the ball. I mean, uh, BC. BC never had the ball with a shot to score. Let's so get, they, they never had the ball with a shot to tie, tie or the take game. the lead. Right. All right. Let's For, give BC and, some credit. And let and let's look at the team cutting up the net. Yeah. <laughs> That's great. Well. Let's give BC right. some credit. It's been a tough go to lose three years in a row. In the uh, let me think who else did that. Uh, <laughs> it's tough. It's agonizing. The seniors leave. Well, in the champion, they lost three years three. in a row in the championship so Maryland. game. Maryland lost three in a row. Okay. And uh, they'll get their day. Their day will come. But I'll tell you what, when you lose that kind of talent. And my final statement to you was when, we, when I saw you on the uh, just off the field, I said, listen, at the end of the day, Three players can't beat 11. And I think that, not that I'm not criticizing any other players on BC, but the goalie wasn't as good, the defense wasn't as good, and the supplemental players to their stars were just not as good as Maryland. That's why Maryland won today. And, you know, and listen, let me just tell it like it is. Maryland's had three championship games, two at Towson, one at home. Three championship games. Okay. Three championship games, two at Towson, one at Homewood, and what was the result of each one? Maryland on top. A national championship. So uh, so 
So what's up for next year? I know she's <laughs> got more players and more players coming in, but she should wrestle on her laurels for this one. And uh, it was just special. That's you know, look, I, I, I said to a couple of people, Bruce, frankly, you know, this, is, this is the measure of the greatness of Maryland's program. Most, most schools put up banners or something. You win a conference championship, you make a Sweet 16, you make a Final Four. At Maryland for women's lacrosse, if you don't win a national championship, there's no banner, there's nothing. Well, they have so many. But to be honest with you, had they lost this game, I never would have said it was a bad year. Had they lost to Northwestern, we would have been upset. But you can't wait. And I'll say it again and again and again. Maryland lacrosse, men's and women's, sits on top of the world. Maybe the women's game a little bit higher with all the natties, but still, when you talk lacrosse, you talk Maryland. And, and Kathy Reese and John Tillman do it. And uh, Bula Bula, you know what that means? <laughs> That's the Yale cheer. Yeah, we'll yeah, be rooting we'll for at... Yale tomorrow. Yes, we Mr. will. Mr. Lars Tiffany. <laughs> all right, we'll be rooting hard for Yale tomorrow. Should be a great game. Uh, I wouldn't yeah. be shocked if uh, UVA pulled the upset. Well, but that's uh, old news. It's done. At least we got one natty, and there's nothing like natties. Bookend, nothing. Kind of bookend the years. A soccer at one end and women's lacrosse at the other. I know the Big Ten's got to love us. Bringing, yeah. bringing the national champions to the Big Ten. And uh, they're still on the field celebrating 25 minutes after the game's over. And I guess they'll never leave until they take the bus ride back to the college park. <laughs> well, or they maybe all, they just leave with their parents. They, yeah. they, they all wanted a piece of the net. Oh, no, they'll, they'll be at a tailgate after tailgate? the game. Oh, yeah. Okay. I know you'll be there. I am on my way when we're done. Right. Please. Todd, any final comments? No, just congratulations to the, the Terps on another incredible season. And it's been a pleasure working with you for another season, Bruce. It and sure Wayne. has been. And I thank you for all your special coverage of women's lacrosse. Uh, whereas maybe Idol, to me it's religion, every men's lacrosse game. <laughs> to you, it's every women's game. I've made much out to, uh, to a share of them. You're certainly yep. here for the big ones, but uh, you do a great job with that, and uh, why not? It's the, it's, the best, it's the best thing in the world because this team rarely loses. And I would not be shocked, and I don't even know who, I know who they're losing. You lose Caroline Steele, you lose the goalie, right? Megan Taylor, Julia Bragg, uh, you know, Jen Giles. You, you lose a lot. You, you lose a lot. But you know, you say that every year. People people what? said, you know, when Taylor Cummings left, who's going to replace Taylor Cummings? And you had Callie Hartshorn at the draw, and Megan Whittle stepped up and became the offensive powerhouse of the team. Well, it just every year. Taylor was left at 16, right? Uh, After the 16th season. I think that's, that's won the right. title in 17, won the title in 19. Right. What else can you say? I mean, it's nothing else to right. say. It just goes on and on. The depth here is incredible. Uh, the kids walk off the field now. That's going to do it uh, again. I know the big dogs having a great day watching this. So to Rick Jacklish, law firm, post game turf talk. That'll be it for lacrosse this season, and uh, we'll be back on in a couple weeks. Less in about two weeks with our Under Armour game where we'll see the Maryland stars of the future, both men and, and women. women. I understand that women have five or six people in the game. Yeah. And uh, my own word, look out for Katie May next year, the Griffins. Julia Hoffman. Julia Hoffman. Probably. Maybe Hannah Glaros. Hannah Glaros and uh, Warther. Uh, Hannah Warther, yeah, right. will step up. And, and um, we have another player's sister coming in next year who's supposed to be really good and just can't keep Sunny it all day, straight. it was hot as hell. Uh, I did get some liquid to Todd. I, was I appreciate about. that, Bruce. And Todd, <laughs> long sleeve, vest, <laughs> 95 degrees. Um, he was ready. Yep. That's, that's going right. to do it. And uh, Todd, Bruce, great season. Thanks. Oh, I forgot. Thank you to Viner Four Gates. And thank Oops. you to Meyer Consulting Engineers. Wave that flag, Todd. Oh, yeah. All right.